piece of investigation about a single photo, so a really detailed study this time. So I've been puzzling for, I think, years now about this particular World War I photo. There are lots of clues in it, that very distinct hill in the background, the jetty, the, uh, you know, the, clearly there's some kind of major wharf facility in the background. There's a profile of a number of boats. But having the devil of a time locating where exactly this photo was taken. Now, it comes from the photo album of somebody who's of importance to my research, because George William Thompson was a dentist with the New Zealand Mounted Field Ambulance. So he was in the same unit as my grandfather, and a number of the photos that he took are very, very relevant to telling me things about my grandfather's story. And in a previous episode, I mentioned that one of the fellows that appears in his photos later will go to London and sign the autograph book of my grandfather's sister, and I you know, investigate how exactly I think that might have happened. So, you know, working out where and when this photo was taken was, well, of more than just passing interest to me. Now, there's the photo etchy of um, Thompson and Drake. So Thompson has the flat cap, and in fact, you can see he's actually holding his photo because he got this photo from another fellow who took it for him. And, um, and that guy with the walking stick was the guy who would later meet up, I think, with my grandfather at Hornchurch Convalescent Camp outside of London and would then visit my grandfather's sister and sign her autograph book. Yeah, there he is. And um, so they went out on the same ship in October of 1914, the HMNZT-3, that's His Majesty's New Zealand Transport, the Monganui, that also had General Godley, the guy in command of the whole New Zealand Expeditionary Force. And I had previously identified a number of the photos, and I had assumed that this was at the entrance to Hobart, Tasmania. I'm now wondering if it actually might not have been, and it may have been somewhere else, but we'll get back to that when I've pointed out what, where I eventually think that photo came from. So, first part of my investigations involved tracing the route and all the ports of call that the Monganui took on its way to Egypt. So, I put this on a map, and um, those exclamation marks mark a few particular incidents. The one on the bottom was a major funeral at sea, where Gilchrist was buried after suffering a morphine overdose, but got a massive funeral at sea nevertheless. Um, they hushed up the way he died. The second exclamation in the middle is where the fleet encountered the German cruiser Emden and their escort, the Sydney, actually succeeded in defeating her. The third exclamation up in the Suez Canal, that is when they finally actually got told that they were going to disembark in Egypt, because right up until that point, they still thought they were heading towards England. So, which of these ports could it possibly be? And this was causing me huge headaches because none of them seemed to align. Now, the best candidate, frankly, with that very distinct hill in the background, seemed to me to actually be Auckland, where I grew up. And, it, you know, it's a nice place for a visit. And you can see here's Auckland's North Shore with the Harbour Bridge in the background and downtown is just a little bit out of sight on the left. And you have a number of distinct hills here. And there is indeed a naval base, which you know, with some jetties poking out into the sea, so they could possibly align with some of the details in the photo. North Head is a major, well, was a major naval installation with lots of gun emplacements and things because it guarded the harbour, and they first started fortifying it when they thought the Russians were coming. This is back in the uh, Great War rivalry at the turn of the 19th and 20th centuries. Later, of course, it was further beefed up to defend against the Japanese. And Mount Victoria is still, I believe, under the control of the New Zealand Navy. I, well, I could be wrong about that. But, um, but again, the, and by the way, these are both extinct volcanoes. New Auckland is just riddled with literally dozens, is it 40 or 50 extinct volcanoes, just all over the place. And it, North Head, that naval installation guarding the entrance to the harbour, was one of my absolute favourite places to go for family trip, day trips, um, when I was growing up in Auckland, they, as I said, they have these tunnels you can ex still explore. They have these gun emplacements. This gun was actually r a really good idea. It was a, a gun that would hide. So if it was being shelled, it could actually, you know, go down into that hole to keep safe from, 
you know, people shelling the position, and then it would come up to fire. And um, and here's a shot from um, North Head. Looking back, there was um, you know Mount Victoria on the right, and you can see downtown Auckland now. And there's another family trip when I went back to visit my mother. And um, you can see there's Mount Victoria, and then the second photo you can see more clearly the New Zealand Naval Base. Now, one of the problems I had was all of those cranes that are in the background of that black and white photo because they don't really align with Auckland Harbour. Um, Auckland had a major port but nothing on the scale of the cranes you see in that black and white photo from Thompson. It was more on the scale of what you see here. This is a photo I took at the Port of Long Beach in LA which is absolutely massive. There are seas of container terminals, masses of cargo coming in. Really, the vast bulk of all the goods coming from China, Japan, Korea, and so on, come through two major ports, either Oakland up in, near San Francisco, or this one. And it was massive. Now, this is a feeble excuse for me to include one of my interesting experiences, but I'm going to do it anyway because when my son was in the Cub Scouts a few years back, we had the opportunity to go for a battleship camp. It was aboard the USS Iowa. It's a World War II battleship that is now a museum at the Port of LA. And if you are with a group like the Scouts, you can go and sleep in those bunk beds. They're very, really tight and narrow. I feel sorry for the sailors who had to um, sleep in them with so much crowd, very, very little head you know, space between your face and the, uh, the bunk just above you. And when we were there for this camp, we were particularly lucky because they fired one of these side guns for us. Well, actually, it wasn't for us. There was a rich yacht club having a party, and they had paid the money. They, you have to pay thousands of dollars for them to fire off these guns. They did it twice, if I remember right. And we just got lucky that we happened to be there the same night. Now, they don't fire the main guns. I think that would shatter windows for miles around and things like this. But even so, this side gun going off was spectacular enough. And I captured a video of when they shot one of the guns. Here it is. Mount 56. Battery released. I don't know if you heard the comment. There it is. We just declared war on Long Beach. Um, there was a spectacular echo. It was so much louder in real life. But I guess all of those blocks and blocks of shipping containers was just the perfect place for the echo of that, um, that gun going off. You, you hear how long it went afterwards. It was really quite amazing and special. Anyway, here we come back to see if there was anything like those cranes at Auckland Harbour. And this, in fact, is a photo from when one of the ships that was part of my grandfather's convoy that would ultimately leave Wellington, not Auckland, but the Waimana um, and the Star of India were two transport ships that picked up Auckland soldiers and then took the troops down to Wellington where they all went out. And there was one of these small New Zealand cruisers, the HMS Philomel. Interestingly, when I went down there, you ha I've, have a photo somewhere in my photo albums of a container ship in exactly the position where the Waimana was. Not a container ship, a cruise ship, you know, one of these luxury cruise liners. And those gates in the foreground, painted red, are still there, looking exactly the same. And you can see in the background of the photo um, back here, there's Mount Victoria and there's North Head. But what you do not see are any large cranes that are in the position that would match Thompson's photo album. And here's another photo giving you a clearer view over towards the naval base. There's where the naval base is. There's Mount Victoria. There's North Head. And again, there's a jetty here. That's in roughly the right place, but no cranes. So reluctantly, I had to abandon the idea that it could have been Auckland, even though the fleet left from Wellington. That didn't quite align, but well, I still thought Auckland for the longest time. 
Um, so then I had to go through and check out photos and images of all of the other potential candidates. So Hobart, Tasmania, well, here's a bunch of photos from the New Zealand National Army Museum, and you can see it's pretty easy to immediately dismiss Tasmania as the, well, the place that that photo was taken, so not Tasmania. Their next port of call, Albany in Western Australia. And again, the profile of the hills and the town and everything else does not match. The next place they stopped was Colombo in modern-day Sri Lanka, and again, very little to connect it to the photo from that photo album, so I quickly could dismiss Sri Lanka. They stopped for coal. The men never got off at Aden, down in the Middle East in modern-day Yemen, and again, a very distinct profile, nothing at all like that photo. They passed through the Suez Canal, but again, the terrain, absolutely not. I thought briefly that some of these places around the Suez Canal, like Port Said, possibly, because they certainly would have had a lot of cranes, but again, none of the landscape in the background had distinct hills like that. They stopped in Alexandria and disembark there. Definitely not a match. So I'm thinking, oh dear, where the heck is this photo? It does not seem to match any single port they went through on their way to war. And since most of the photos came quite early on in the war, I had just assumed it was during their outwards voyage that the photo must have been taken. However, I belatedly realised, what about the journey home to New Zealand? Maybe I should check that out. So, looking up Thompson's military file, I learned that he embarked for New Zealand aboard a transport called the Tainui on the 18th of March 1919. There is... Um, from the entry from his military file, and there is the entry from my own grandfather's military file, and you'll notice, yes, they embarked for New Zealand aboard the Tainui from the Port of Plymouth on 18th of March 1919. So the alignment of these two guys, my grandfather and the dentist Thompson, goes beyond merely sharing the ship and being in the same unit at the start of the war. Fate would bring them so that they actually return to New Zealand aboard the same ship as well which of course means any photos from the return voyage are terribly interesting to me as well. And here's, well, a different part of my family story. Uh, there's one of my brothers during a trip to the Panama Canal. I've never been, but I could borrow some of his holiday snaps and thinking, could it have been when they passed through the, the Panama Canal? That's the route that the Tainui took to go home. And at first I thought, well, none of these photos seem to match very well. But then... Continuing to search on the New Zealand National Army Museum, I found this photo, and it isn't actually labelled as the Panama Canal, but from context of the other photos, you can tell where that has to be. And I'm looking at that hill thinking, that's kind of similar to the one we saw. And there's this other photo, which again is Panama Canal. And I'm thinking, is that a possible candidate? So here's that original photo again, just to remind you what, of what it looked like. And there are those two photos on the right that I just showed you. Now, they don't match up exactly, but of course, as you would move along, the profile of the hill would change somewhat, and I'm thinking, it's still a possibility, not a certain possibility, it doesn't match exactly, but it could work, and that would certainly explain why there were so many cranes. I mean, there's not going to be that many places in 1919 that are going to have massive um, large cranes, but the Suez Canal, somewhere near Panama City, would certainly be a, a good candidate. So what do I do? I pulled up some photos of Panama City, and um, and below would be where the uh, cruise ships would go through, well, anybody, cargo ships heading towards the Panama Canal, looking for hills that match the profile. None of those really match, although there is a wharf, a jetty, a sort of a pair at a roughly the right position. So you can see here the route they take, um, and here's, you know, Google satellite view. There's that um, pair sticking out in the water. You can even see a big cargo ship going through, and that bridge certainly doesn't match the, um, the photo, but there's a quite a big hill there, and there's another hill there. Could it be that that's what we're looking at in the photo? There's a different um, Google Maps view that gives you sort of the elevations, so could these hills be sort of this one and that one somehow aligned depending on the angle, or maybe that one and that one, would this one, you know, maybe if the boat was around here looking up that way, there wouldn't 
right now be a pair that exactly matches it, but you know, pairs of wood, they, they rot out, they could 